Senator from Alaska. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I think we could go around, uh, certainly around this side of the table, and, and hear uh, clearly articulated justification for each of these policy provisions that are contained in, whether it is the, the, the three that were continued from years prior uh, or the, the additional ones that you see in front of you uh, relating to clean power plan, uh, waters of the U.S., uh, ozone, um, gray wolf delisting. The reason you would hear strongly articulated support is because these are priorities um, from not only members of this committee, but members of this body who have come to us, who have said, uh, exactly as, as the leader has mentioned, um, we are we're at wit's end in terms of how we deal with the regulations that are coming at us, that are coming at our states, that are coming um, and, and, and holding back our, our state's economy, our nation's economy, our families. And so you, you look to the ways that you can address them. We've got a funding bill in front of us. Uh, and I, I respect very much what Senator Feinstein has said in terms of the decisions that she uh, made when she was chairman of this subcommittee uh, in, in staying strictly to those funding issues. Um, I, too, want to make sure that this bill is more than a messaging bill, that it is, it is enacted and, and into, put into law. But I think we have to respect the fact that we have limited tools when regulations come at us from an agency. How many tools do we have in our toolbox to deal with regulations that we look at that appear to address an issue but go so far beyond the scope of the laws that we passed? We've got the Congressional Review Act that can effectively try to uh, veto a regulation, but we know how uh, limited that is in its application. And so when I hear from constituents back home about the things that they care most about, about how they are able to, to um, put in a, uh, a new driveway or build a driveway in the first place, or perhaps build a, uh, a, a hangar for an aircraft, um, not big projects, but projects that are being delayed years, projects that are, are potentially just out of the, the, the stretch of, of reach because of financial costs that are added to them. And it's because of the regulations that we see coming at them. And Waters of the U.S., as mentioned by my friend from, from North Dakota, is, is, is one that we have described as, as a showstopper. In the second largest city in the state of Alaska, effectively every, every acre surrounding Fairbanks is considered uh, within the definition of, of waters of the U.S. So whether you're a developer, big, little, or small, or a homeowner, the steps, the hoops that you've got to jump through uh, are, are causing people to, to just wonder what in the world we do back here. And it's not just waters of the U.S., it's what's going on with ozone. The, the, the statements that have been made about the ozone rule, uh, that it, the National Association of Manufacturers estimates that the impact of, of this standard would be the most expensive regulation in history. In history. And, and what we're doing within this policy provision is not saying, no, you, you shall not, there shall be no funds to, to advance it. It says, before we update the current standard, we need to ensure that most countries can comply with the existing standards. Um, the hydraulic fracking that has been mentioning, we're not saying no funds shall be expended. We're saying in states where we are already advancing um, hydraulic fracking rules and in providing good oversight, we don't need an additional overlay. The, the leader has spoken about the clean power plan, but but in, when you think about expansion, um, arguably an unlawful expansion of the, of the Clean Air Act, what we're, what we're asking there is that states who oppose the rule have the opportunity to avoid submitting 
a plan until the legal process is played out. So you've got 14 states that are involved in litigation. We're not stopping EPA's work on, on the clean power plant we, in those states where the, where the governors want to support or, or submit a plan. It only prohibits work in states that, that don't agree with the EPA's actions. So we've taken, I call it a sensible approach to, to the various policy provisions that are in here. Um, and I would, ask, I would ask colleagues to look critically at how we have, have approached some of these issues that have stymied farmers, miners, small developers, homeowners, big developers, those who want to engage in any level of economy in the country, and, and look to what we have put in play. Uh, and I would ask that, uh, as you do so, you reject the amendment by my colleague from New Mexico. Mr. Clerk, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman.